Hello and welcome to Stacking Wisdom Podcast, episode number four. We're, we're your hosts, Artem and Alex, and today we're joined with Chef Ayal and Rebecca. She's a sommelier, and uh, let, let's talk to you guys about the industry, the the happenings, um, your business. Uh, but maybe you can give us a little bit of background about each other as well, um, and maybe you know the background on being partners and how how does that work for you guys. Um, which one of you wants to start? <laughs> Go ahead. She's, she's. All right. uh, so we are basically, it's a partnership between a chef and sommelier. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's our focus. Mm-hmm. Um, our focus is, of course, on being like a good sommelier and a good chef, but mm-hmm. mainly on the relationship between them. Okay. And uh, that's what we bring to clients, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at restaurants, there are many... Uh, there are many chefs, there are many sommeliers, there isn't necessarily a connection between them. Sure. Mm-hmm. And you don't feel that connection when you dine at that space. Mm-hmm. What we do, we bring that connection to people's homes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we celebrate that connection and that's why the food and wine pairing is the focus mm-hmm. um, of what that we do. Um, and I think that's like one of our uh, strongest things. Uh, that we offer, one of them at least. Yeah. I, I, from, yeah. from what I can tell as well, it's, it seems to be um, a little bit of a, a differentiation as well because mm-hmm. uh, from what I've seen, there's, uh, there are tons of personal chefs and they kind exactly. of come mm-hmm. across with yeah. sort of allowing, you know, to, to bring that combination of wine pairings as well. But when you have somebody who's obviously a professional and a professional, and when you combine the two, it's almost like elevates the experience to almost mm-hmm. like a different level, right? So. Yeah. Um, can you tell us more about um, your beginnings and maybe how you both got into sort of this, you know, the, the different industries that are sort of, you know, the complementary to, to each other as well? Uh, it's a good question. How did that happen? <laughs> how did that happen? Um, <laughs> mostly mistakes, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mistakes and mishappenings. I mean, I, I needed, I came to Canada on, um, in, Oh, I, I applied in 04 mm-hmm. when there was a boom in the film industry. Sure. And I come from the film industry. But okay. when I landed in 07, uh, the big recession hit. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. And it was impossible to infiltrate the film industry. Um, so I started cooking, mm-hmm. washing dishes, and uh, there I am. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> with, with your experience, well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it might sound like very humble beginnings, but at the same time, I, I know of a lot of chefs that have started in, in those same pathways too, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And like they, this, you, this is the best yeah. way to start. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. if you, and as my old chef used to say, if you don't respect the floor that you're cooking on, mm-hmm. I can teach you much. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. You, you have to start from there. It's like all these, uh, I, I see them celebrities that started from say oh i had a cooking blog and then now i'm a big chef (laughs) (laughs) cool but um this is very important (laughs) and it's like they they don't make the self-cleaning dishes anymore Mm. so yet let's say (laughs) so you need to and it teaches you how to you know it's like change it's like changing your baby it's Mm -hmm. also one of the processes to mm-hmm. connect with mm-hmm. the human mm-hmm. so all these things are are part of our connection with sure mm-hmm. uh, for Rebecca I think yeah it was for me it also happened you needed a, a job we needed, basically. Basically. we needed a job we arrived to Canada and we were like we worked in the film industry mm-hmm. and the film industry was like you know very crushing. yeah mm-hmm. it's to- it was totally crushing right. and mm-hmm. we realized it's totally unionized as mm-hmm. well and i was like okay i need to get cash how do you get cash you work mm-hmm. in a restaurant yeah mm-hmm. um, it's that and what it's like it's technically it's like you're an immigrant mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah what you're an jobs immigrant. do they sure. offer to immigrants like exactly mm-hmm. as much as we want to celebrate the diversity of us mm-hmm. in canada and we're a great country and we're beautiful and of i don't course. think i want mm-hmm. to live anywhere else but mm-hmm. we're kind of still racist Mm. So. Th- th- I, I can yeah. definitely see. Yeah. I think that maybe when you go outside of especially like big metropolitan cities, exactly. mm-hmm. you, like can Toronto, definitely, you can definitely feel, feel it. it. Yeah. And I, I, I'll tell you my, my experience too, is I was born outside of Canada too. And I came to Canada when I was 16. So yeah. I've I kind of, I've, I've traveled the States a little bit. So I've had that exposure and living there. But at the same time, I can totally relate to some of the things that you're saying. Mm. I think that's, um, it, I think they've even done a study, I think uh, maybe 10 years ago where they've, Taken a resume of a, a with a typical white name, and they've taken a resume with a, with a, with something like an Indian name. That's my story. And they've yeah. they forwarded it, and yeah. 
to mm -hmm. see who would actually get a callback. Mm -hmm. And somebody with a typical uh, British name mm -hmm. got a lot more callbacks than yeah. the, the mm -hmm. person with, with a typical, or not really typical, like, mm -hmm. because it's atypical, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. sounding yeah. name yeah. that's foreign to a Canadian ear. Yeah. So I can, I can totally understand that, but I think that's, in a sense, it's kind of like a motivator for you too, exactly. to kind of just keep fighting. And, yeah. and also I think coming from a, an experience of you know, living abroad, that you mm -hmm. always have that mentality exactly. to not, never sort of rely on anybody else, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Never rely on the government, or never rely on any yeah. kind yeah. of yeah. On police mm -hmm. and like anybody yeah. else. It's always just you having that to prove yourself as a, exactly. as a person mm -hmm. that's gonna sort of fight <clears throat> and having that background and you know, coming from outside of it, you've already experienced, you know, the diversity so much more, I think, when you live abroad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, when I arrived to Canada, I arrived with the name Rivka, mm -hmm. which is a Hebrew name. It's mm -hmm. exactly like Rebecca, it's just sure. the way the Bible was translated. Of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I just sent a resume, without me going to mm -hmm. the restaurants, I heard nothing. Mm -hmm. When I changed it to Rebecca, suddenly, you get calls mm -hmm. back. Right, yeah. No, the you thing sound is, white enough. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is, like, so what do you do? You know, so I, I decided to go by Rebecca, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. with time people figure out my name is Rivka, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I try to change things from, from within, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and yes, I'm an immigrant, that said, it also works for my benefit as a sommelier, for sure, mm -hmm. you know, like when it comes to other languages, when it comes to traveling, like there's so many sommeliers that I know that have never traveled around the world and that's a shame mm. really because and it's a, yeah. and it's a, it's a matter of culture because you, yeah. you need you're to understand cultures. Mm -hmm. you introduce cultures and if you you're not exposed to different cultures mm -hmm. you will not understand in depth mm -hmm. at the different expressions of wines mm -hmm. so when you come from somewhere else or from several different places i come from several different backgrounds mm -hmm. um, then you, you you're a very rich person and that's what you can basically bring to the Canadians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, eventually, like it became something that I really could bank on and that I can really like get ahead because of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you gotta make it. Like, you gotta figure out what is that thing that is different about you that can also be problematic, um, but, um, but can also be very beneficial and like take it in a good way and just just make mm -hmm. it happen, right? So Business mm. advice number one. <laughs> Business advice number one is know what Find you have, know uniqueness. what you do not have, and like make the best mm -hmm. from um, your best qualities, Try your, best your talent, not be your like background. Else. <laughs> and, and I see it also when it comes to, I worked in some really high-end restaurants, mm -hmm. and um, usually it's white men who work there, right? Mm -hmm. Older white men, mm -hmm. and sometimes, and then there is the token woman, and then there is the um, person of color, um, one person of mm -hmm. color, and they're usually the best servers. Usually, because for them to get mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. they need to work twice as hard as for a white man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I also see that some of the clients, some of the customers, really admire them mm -hmm. because it takes so much from from you emotionally to say to tell yourself every morning when you wake up, I can do as much as a white person can mm -hmm. do, even though no one believes me. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and people feel it and it inspires. Mm -hmm. So eventually that server made like better tips than anyone else, you know what That's I mean? True, because yeah. like, he was as here, he was like, this is who I am mm -hmm. and I'm good. I, mm -hmm. I think it's so, the, the landscape with the restaurant industry has changed quite a bit though and maybe in the last two, uh, 10, 15 years because mm -hmm. I think that a lot of the back, um, uh, the back area of the restaurants is become predominantly like Hispanic background, right? Because there's mm -hmm. so many immigrants that come from Mexico know, and yeah, that, that yeah, move up yeah, in, yeah. in the industry so, so, so well, right? Oh, so it's, uh, yeah. Now in Canada, yeah. it's mostly, it, Hispanic is mostly mm -hmm. in States. Is it? Like okay, when yeah. you go here, mm -hmm. it's Sri Lankans. Sri Lankans, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. So it's, it's the Asians and like... Uh, it's the yeah. people, it's like, again, it's like when you listen to Trump's rhetoric, mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. they're taking our jobs, they're not taking your jobs, mm -hmm. you're not willing to do those jobs. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. Many, yeah. how many white people do you know that like, mm -hmm. would wash dishes? For mm -hmm. sure, yeah, yeah. and I, I, I agree with you that it's uh, for a lot of people that are, uh, are having you know facing difficult times. It's the one of the more easier maybe uh, ways to sort of get into something like that. Mm -hmm. And then if you if they find themselves to be good, whether they have that talent maybe to cook, right, mm -hmm. or if they have that salesmanship and the way that they can upsell somebody mm -hmm. on a specific items, then that's the, the where it sort of uh, tries you know helps them to elevate their 
their skills and it allows them to grow as a person too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you are, you guys are obviously knew each other so before you even started in the industry, right? Yeah, so, yeah, mm -hmm. did, but yeah. uh, with uh, the partnership itself, um, do you find that it's it's difficult to sort of be together as, as you know, uh, as the two people, but also like in relationship, but also having to work with each other like 24 seven, how, how do you try to sort of balance that out and make it, it's, you know, keep your sanity to some extent as well. I'll, I'll disclaim my answer. <laughs> with, uh, a very, you'll never get anything straight from me. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I, I just don't believe in absolutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe that everything, uh, we always, we always drawn to like uh, either this is evil, this is good. And I sure. think that everything lives somewhere on like, um, you know, middle platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the reason we did what we did is because I was working as a chef and she was working as a server, mm -hmm. and sommelier and manager mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, we barely saw each other. Mm -hmm. So the reason we started working together was the fact that we wanted to see each other mm -hmm. like at least mm -hmm. two, three days a week. <laughs> uh, so yes but on the other hand yeah it could be again it's like there's no break mm. you, you 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 fight with your wife yeah. you come here sure and mm. you have a break mm -hmm. i fight with my wife and uh we go to work together <laughs> so it's like everything has pluses minuses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. I think it's it's actually quite. I don't know. I think for me it's quite easy to do that. Okay, there is a fight. Let's say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then immediately after that we have work. It's like cut. Now mm -hmm. it's work. Now it's, it's, a, it's a professional like, you coming out, right? Aside, yeah, it's like you need mm -hmm. to remember. Like, aside, I just had a fight with my wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I'm with my son. Same, mm -hmm. In the same mm -hmm. way that you come to your office, you don't come with those problems. Sure, right? of course. So yeah. you do like okay, cut. Now I'm at work. Mm -hmm. It's the same. Practice, yeah, practice makes perfect. I, I, I think it's the same. Yeah. Understand. I think it's actually professionally, it's like, I don't know. I find it, I don't find it that difficult mm -hmm. working. Because like on the other hand, you really know each other. You know mm. each other's weaknesses. Um, there is nothing um, that we are hiding from each other. So everything is very transparent. Everything That's is very clear. It makes it very quick too. <laughs> You know, you mm -hmm. can actually move with your business mm -hmm. uh, much faster than with partners that mm -hmm. you need to consider every word that you're saying. And that, that's very, very yeah. true because I, I think that's when you start, when you have friends and you try to partner up in the business, yeah. then it brings out all the dirty that you never, never ever see usually, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it sort of shows you true colors. And to some extent, I, I, I can totally agree that if you've kind of seen those not so good moments know. sometimes that mm -hmm. it's sometimes it's easier to even like interact and maybe try to like you know g you give a little bit here you give a little mm -hmm. bit here so it's but almost it's like, like why, complimentary why, why did right we yeah. come here today mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. a daily basis like mm -hmm. are we here to pamper your ego or mm -hmm. are we here to mm -hmm. get this done mm -hmm. sure. if we're here to get this done and we both know mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it's like there's no hurting each other because how can i hurt them? It's, like, mm -hmm. it's my mm -hmm. partner right yeah so that and helps yeah. a lot. I think also what attracts us to the um, um, hospitality industry is the um, uh, this sense of warmth of family. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. even when we worked in a restaurant, you create a small family basically. Mm -hmm. um, less in big corporations, it's more like sure. a fake family kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Many times you're supposed um, to like it. <laughs> sorry, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but in the smaller restaurant, you create a sense of family, anyways, mm -hmm. right? And even like when we have people working with us, they're part of the family. Mm. And then there is compassion inside, and that what makes it like the boutique kind of feeling mm. and caring for each other. And if someone doesn't feel great, like everyone knows and everyone covers for them, you know. So I think that is something that people really miss in workplaces today mm -hmm. and they don't have it enough because you're just like another body that does a job that can yeah. be replaced. Mm -hmm. Where if you think about it traditionally, it was like there were so many family run businesses and even like wineries. So oh, many sure. wineries for are sure. still family run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and not all of their kids are doing a great job, but it's their kids, you mm -hmm. know, and they kind of like they figure it out. You, do you, know, you don't just like fire family, people yeah. because they're not mm -hmm. a good fit for today mm -hmm. because they went through something uh, personally. So, mm -hmm. so I think in that sense, like actually working with your family is is something great. Like, mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. keeps that warmth in your life. Mm -hmm.
could you tell our audience maybe like for for those that don't know like just about like your your background of how you kind of grew because I, I believe you you own your own restaurant now no we own a private chef business okay right right um, but yeah just uh, how have you kind of like grown to like where you're, you're where you're at today like obviously you mentioned like how you got into this industry because you were forced to find a job in a kitchen right but like how did you work your way up to like the where, where you're at now and like what got you into like creating the the food and, and the wine and the cu cuisine that you specialize mm -hmm. in like what was that whole like story like me yeah go ahead oh it's fine mm -hmm. um so i was um mostly i was trained in pastry mm -hmm. and she was uh running up at saison mm -hmm. um a few years it's like i i can't really keep a job because mm. I have opinions and I'm not good at hiding them. <laughs> um, well, that's what we want. We want opinions on the show today. Yeah. So. No, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Even in the workplace, I'm, I'm, I, I, can't keep, I can't seem to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> mm. So I was uh, constantly moving from kitchen to kitchen. Mm. Um, and at a certain point, we wanted to start something of our own. And uh, we came up with the idea of um, starting to change, to revolutionize the cake industry mm -hmm. um, and that didn't work and didn't click with the public because people don't want to spend s we wanted the, the the idea was to bring in to take away the vanity and mm -hmm. to bring in the extra flavor texture and stuff like that but sadly uh, the cake industry is mostly um, weddings and weddings are 100% about vanity so yeah. mm -hmm. Not a good business model. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, I guess you, you, you learn and you grow, mm -hmm. right? So, exactly. Yeah. That's and how it is, yeah. during that time and making of that business, we started doing um, pop-up dinners. Okay. Where, because I kind of missed the, the real kitchen uh -huh. because of the way I grew, and uh, as we went, we discovered that we're good at that, and we developed into what we are doing now. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Again, it's like because of the like because of the nature that I don't believe in mistakes. I don't believe in absolutes. Mm -hmm. So we just learned as we went. We learned what we are not supposed to do, and we learned what we are supposed to do, and we went to what we're doing now. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, it's important to fail to succeed. Mm -hmm. Like and to mm -hmm. know. No, like it's not important to fail to succeed. Well, it's just naturally. It's happens. important to succeed. Yeah, it's important mm. to succeed, but you and will to usually, acknowledge failures. but you will usually like you will make mistakes and you will learn from your mistakes, and that's mm. how you will succeed eventually. Not necessarily. Um, Sometimes you'll succeed like instant. Mm. Yeah, I, it happens, I don't know. and I don't I think I don't think that these are. That, but yeah. Yeah, but they're not like lesser yeah. businesses. No, of course. I mean, if you're an instant success yeah. overnight. I don't think you'll be lesser than somebody that yeah. had like 20 mistakes. But maybe you're appreciated a little bit uh, you might less, right? So. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's like privilege mm -hmm. comes in so many uh -huh. shapes and colors. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could be the most privileged, it's like you could have like, you can be a, a cis heterosexual white man mm -hmm. and still check yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can be like the most oppressed person and not check yourself at all and mm -hmm. walk this earth with some sort of privilege. So this is, there's, there's no absolute answer to that. Mm -hmm. That said, it's like, yeah, if you had rough climb to your success, you, you're you more likely to. Mm -hmm. well, I think it's also about like maybe being self-aware to some extent as well, right? Because exactly. if a person, they, they can come from a, like a really privileged background or rich background, but they can they can always just have like a, just a good head on their shoulders and just kind of, you know, be very sensitive to and perceptive to the outside world mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. and then you can have self awareness yeah. is a choice right? yeah mm -hmm. like, I, I agree but i think it's also, it's also maybe in the environment that you grew up in as well right to some extent yeah i i'm not sure right i'm not okay. sure because because when it's like if, if politically if you mm -hmm. take deconstruct privilege mm -hmm. sure uh, acknowledging it and knowing it and starting to give it up is choice mm -hmm. I and mean, there was a beautiful meme on that i found on facebook that said that um, um being gay is not a choice mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. being homophobic is <laughs> so it's it's exactly this it's like mm. acknowledging yeah. it's like if we're looking at the three of us we, we appear as white mm -hmm. men mm. so for us to acknowledge that privilege there's no incentive for us to do it it's like we are at the height of the world mm -hmm. for us to acknowledge the existence of Rebecca for that sake there's no incentive for us there's actually incentives not to because once we acknowledge her we open the market to 50 more percent yeah 
mm. competition. Yeah. So it's not in our best interest to allow women in or people of color in. It's, like mm-hmm. we, we, it's, our, it's uh, in our best interest, quote unquote, to keep the privilege. Mm-hmm. But if we want a diverse society, if we want good society, if we want to be good people, there's so many incentives to yes, but we need to see them, we need to check them, we need to decide if we want that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then if you're looking at the political scene, it's like, that's why Trump's on, because enough people are saying, oh no, we don't want that competition. It's mm-hmm. like, we'd rather have it like the old ways. Mm-hmm. Sure. But I, I, think, yeah. I think it's also mm-hmm. about um, the majority that maybe is in charge, and that's sometimes it might seem appear like as being unfair. But but, it's not a um, but yeah, no, I, I don't mean I don't mean a, I don't mean a majority in the sense that like majority of maybe uh, the perception, but it's almost like people they always want to sort of fit in with with you know the the very typical kind of perception of things, right? So yeah, and, and we and are tribal and yeah, we like to link exactly right together. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's almost like they they're all, like a lot of people there. It's just easier for them to kind of follow the the pack, exactly. mm-hmm. and then just kind of follow in the steps well. instead of mm-hmm. yeah, trying yeah. to maybe develop that individual, you know, uh, person that you you're trying to be, right? So that in itself, I think maybe is one of the you know things about our society, maybe that we have is is, is just is just that, right? So at the end of the day, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's like. The only way for you to succeed in, succeed in business as an individual, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. unless it's like if you go the corporate path, then yes, you need to conform. Sure. Because mm-hmm. they want you to conform. Mm-hmm. But if you want to make a small business, if you want to be an independent person, it's like you need to be everything that they're not. Because if you, exactly. if mm-hmm. your idea is to, it's like mm-hmm. the, I, I see three models. I see the like the startup uh, technological model mm-hmm. of I'll try to make something unique that Google, Microsoft, all these would just buy me out and mm-hmm. cancel me. So that's that's inter- entrepreneurship. Sure. Uh, the minute you are you're willing to part with your baby, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not willing to part with what I do. Mm-hmm. There's no way that somebody would come and buy me out mm-hmm. because this is what I do. This is my life. Um, but that's one way. And then you don't necessarily have to be unique. You have to find some sort of uniqueness, but a uniqueness that can be conformed. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can succeed in the corporate world, and then make sure you conform because nobody's going to like you. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you don't want these two paths, then make sure that you're unique and all the fears that you have that your uniqueness would drive people away, mm-hmm. that's the only reason people will come to you. Because for yeah. me to compete with all these corporations, they'll eat me alive. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think like you, you got to think like your customer. Mm-hmm. What is your customer missing mm-hmm. uh, that you have to give, basically? Um, like big corporations, unless you want to become a big corporation and you have the money for it and everything, um, that is one thing. If you are a small business, as Ayal said, you have to be unique. So you got to figure out what is it in you that you have to give professionally mm-hmm. and also personally, because if you are a small business, you're selling your personality. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. You have to understand that you're selling your personality and you got to make sure that you're selling something that is different mm-hmm. and special. And just um, like everything different, every other thing that is different, some people won't like it. Mm-hmm. Some people yeah, won't, exactly. yeah. just like with the cakes, right? Yeah. Well, it's like yeah. obviously the people that want the, the, the corporate <laughs> shablonic thing, mm-hmm. they'll go to that, right? Mm-hmm. So you are going to lose some of them. Yeah, but mm-hmm. uh, in the cake situation, so th- that's a very interesting, because like, there was something unique there with uh, sugar work and things like that. But the mm-hmm. problem is, that the market is um, less into spending on sweets. Um, there is a movement away of sugar. So you of also course. have to yeah. understand like what is happening um, as, a, as a, a global movement. Mm-hmm. And you can't go against it because you're not going to win. I think yes. We so failed not because of that. But we yeah, failed because it was, it was yeah, just yeah. a bad idea. But yeah, I, yeah. I think it's also maybe it's a bit... It's a matter of numbers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You've got to figure out the sure. numbers. If the numbers are not because, you know, if you, how many cases do I have to sell to make that profit? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but then as we started doing those collaborations between Chef and Sommelier, then suddenly with the wine profit, not wine, we don't make wine profit, mm-hmm. but the Sommelier profits, steaks, food, and the whole experience that you're basically selling, suddenly there mm-hmm. is profit there. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, so there has to be, like all of those things need to, to come together to have something that is successful. Sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, that actually brings me to another question that I, I kind of wanted to ask you is, um, you obviously with your experience with, you know, with the, 
the sweets industry. I, I still think that it's, to some extent, people want to give over a perception that they're trying to be healthy, but it's always like the in the back yeah, of your mind, it's I always know. it's always like guilty pleasure, and you're like, I you know what? I'm gonna tell everybody that I'm eating salad, but I'm really gonna go and buy like a little exactly. cupcake somewhere and like actually you know snack on it because it's you know it's one of those things that feeds your brain, and it's just like your brain is almost. Oh telling you like sugar you need some sugar from plants and, yeah and mm. the wheat is a plant so basically a cupcake is a salad yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good way to put it yeah, very <laughs> but I, I i guess i, I want to kind of know hear your perspective on the wine industry and like how is that you know like sort of somewhat of a backlash against sugar does it affect the wine industry at all because Technically, wines are filled with sugars, really. You, if you think, you if you what? if you think about it, right? It's, so, North America has a very problematic relationship with food. Mm -hmm. Like that's how I see it. Very problematic. I, I agree one hundred percent. I like the word. Um, <laughs> and uh, and 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 the funny thing is, they think about what they chew, mm -hmm. but not about what they drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everything that they drink, oh, that's probably okay. Cocktails, they don't think twice before they order a cocktail. Before mm -hmm. they will order a dessert, then like, oh, oh, sugar, sugar. And it's kind of like, what do you think is in your cocktail? Mm -hmm. um, and there's no thought about natural ingredients because the thing is like, go, go to Paris. Like there are like skinny, beautiful ladies that eat croissants there. Mm -hmm. Like it's not something that you do not see mm -hmm. here. Like. N people would not touch croissant because there is so much butter there mm -hmm. you know like there is good fat there is not good fat there is natural ingredients not natural ingredients and your body reacts differently to them mm -hmm. it's the same with wine if your wine is like a dollar a bottle from california sorry california but <laughs> i'm talking about the eight dollar a bottle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like there is a reason why it's eight dollars a bottle and the same with, in with food ingredients if it's that cheap Mm -hmm. There is something wrong there because that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. of my favorite questions to clients is they, they usually come, they're, they're usually families and they usually have a kid and I'm like, if, if I'll, I'll, I'll find you a deal, there's a, there's a teacher for your kid, for your seven-year-old, um, they, they're charging, uh, it's a deal, they're, they're taking two dollars an, an hour, uh, would you hire that teacher? No. But the two dollars a pound salmon—that's a yes, right? <laughs> I mean, you do understand that that's what you're made out of. Mm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that, that that's one of the biggest challenges that kind of exists in North America is that people have, like, like you said, they have a very bad relationship with food. Yeah. Mm. And the, the fact that maybe I like we're, bad, we're, we're, that's we're, better yeah. than <laughs> problematic. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I would yeah, up yeah. the eighty with the. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to be uh, like moderate a little bit here, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't want to bash it. it was, yeah. Yeah. I think I think it's about convenience and yeah. just yeah. being o always offered that very easy sort of fix. It's tempting. Yeah. And I yeah. think coming from a background outside of Canada, it's mm -hmm. always you know growing up with your grandparents cooking or your mom cooking or somebody else in your house cooking and it's always like almost developing that love for for you know for mm -hmm. food and it's yeah. also uh, it's almost like um a, a, such a uniting thing i think for a lot of people too that's mm, yeah. yeah and people don't get it that you take, look look at the way we build homes today and look mm -hmm. at the way we used to build homes once upon a time oh yeah mm -hmm. we used to have the kitchen was the center of your life mm -hmm. and now the kitchen is the size of this table <laughs> yeah because nobody yeah. cooks and yeah. nobody takes the time to enjoy food and mm -hmm. the sick relationship is in ingredients is in convenience it's also in like they think that you can make food in five minutes yeah mm -hmm. and yes you can but mm -hmm. there's a price it's like everything comes with a price mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and when you make food that is five minutes to make the price is health. Sure. The price is everything else. Like we, if, if we're looking in North America, we are the sickest society. Mm. Oh, in terms of food relationship, yeah. absolutely, one hundred percent. It's the food itself, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's mm -hmm. the food relationship. It's the fact mm -hmm. that everything's on the go. It's the fact that um, one of my family members uh, traveled to Italy, mm -hmm. and she had an espresso in one of the, like on a mountain ledge somewhere, and she's like, "Can I have it to go?" And the, the shop owner looks at her and says, like, go where? 
<laughs> Where do you want to go? You're Where do you want to go? Yeah. Like, yeah. How long is it going yeah. to take you to drink an espresso? <laughs> like, you can't stop and like be yeah. here. Yeah, and present in the moment. Yeah. This. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but that's the thing. Like when we come to people's homes, suddenly you have all those smells because mm -hmm. Eyal cooks like on the spot in front of them, mm -hmm. and it it brings up and those Eyal memories, stops. and it's something that we. It's something that we need. <coughs> it's something that is naturally uh, so comforting. Um, and then suddenly someone really cooks with real ingredients mm. and on the spot, it's not like catering where it comes mm -hmm. to you already heated and was mm. frozen like a few times and all of that. Like it's actual like a person who is cooking, is cooking there. Um, so, so that is like one of the big things that we bring to people uh, where if you call like, corporate or restaurants to do that in your place you get it you get it already cooked mm -hmm. like, well, well, that, that's and then the, just the yeah, plating to sure. finish they do it there but that's not it's not the same it doesn't feel the same it doesn't taste the same um it's not a cultural and experience and that's yeah, what exactly. i what i bring it's like part of this there's so many things that are unique mm -hmm. right? like, I, I think that if if as a company all you have is like this is my uniqueness yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. then True. A, I easily copy you, and B, it's not sustainable. It's really not sustainable because your Unix would be obsolete within a few years. Um, I, I, it's like, I think that the biggest thing about what we do is that we bring culture mm -hmm. and we stop. I, I deliberately sometimes would take extra 15 minutes to make the food mm -hmm. just for them to be able to stop and think it's like we need to be more appreciative of the food we have of mm -hmm. the product we have of the abundance we have here in North America mm -hmm. and everything else and and that's the that's where the situation the, the, the educational mm -hmm. aspect as well like they have a chef and a sommelier in their home mm -hmm. um, it's a great opportunity uh, to start like we always start conversations about mm -hmm. the ingredients how how it helps them Mm -hmm. How can they get good ingredients? Uh, what is problematic? What is not? People have so many questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, would um, you would you go to a school mm -hmm. and put your kid there without meeting the teacher? Definitely not. Of course, mm -hmm. you'd want to exactly. at least know. Uh, you know, have you met your butcher? Details about mm -hmm. uh, the curriculum. Have you, have you met, met the person who grows your cow? No, you haven't. We used to. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that's actually to me. That, that's the yeah. problem. It's yeah. like yeah. you mm -hmm. would actually tell me that you would never mm -hmm. leave your kid in a school and mm -hmm. not meet the person that educates them, mm -hmm. but you would not meet the person that grows the food that they're made out of. Mm -hmm. I, I agree, yeah. and I think that that sort of brings you into the the realization that I think that a lot of North American people don't really grasp is the fact that whatever you're consuming, you're putting in your body is essentially what you become exactly. and it's right there in the open it's yeah. an open knowledge right and it's, that it was alive yeah, but once upon the exactly. time we, 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 and you should care for it how it for sure how mm -hmm. it was raised mm -hmm. like it's, i mean it's we made it steaks you. now you eat it. mm -hmm. it's, it's your responsibility you know? but unlike my, my grandfather and my uncle they used to go hunting all the time yeah. and mm -hmm. they always brought the the respect and like for example my grandfather he taught me how to how to pluck a duck and how to take mm -hmm. all the feathers off and how to yeah. fire it off and how to make sure that they, you know that you utilize and maybe use all the ingredients and that, the that come with thing it right there so is that mm -hmm. you had the respect to the fact that something died to feed you mm -hmm. and, absolutely and that's where i'm i'm mediating between the extreme veganism to the like um all the like gluten keto people mm -hmm. that wants mm -hmm. to kill their whole uh, dinner <laughs> um, <laughs> We love to think, we're trying to beautify everything mm -hmm. in a way. We're saying it's like, the cow gave its life to feed you. Fuck no. <laughs> the cow did not give its life. It's okay. You it's yeah. murdered a yeah. cow to yeah. feed yourself. Yeah. yeah. And it's A, very, very respectful if you eat the whole cow mm. and take care of it before it dies. Give it a decent life and mm. don't kill more than you need. And because you're murdering animals to feed yourself, try to minimize that as well. Mm -hmm. And you re really, really don't need to be at the point that we are in North America right now. It's like mm -hmm. we're looking at an average of nine ounces of protein, animal protein, a right. day per person. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're supposed to consume a week. 
do, do you think it, to some extent maybe it stems also from the fact that when you go to a, a chain restaurant or a big corporate restaurant, you get overloaded with salt, sugar, like all the main no, it's tastes as well. We, we don't respect animals' lives anymore. But I think that we, it almost... We, we got to the point that if, if once upon a time when mm -hmm. you went to the butcher, yeah. mm -hmm. you saw half a cow sure. sitting like that, where do you see that? Now it's like now, now I'm looking at the big corporate um, department stores. They would have like a little uh, rib sitting there, and, yeah. and the butcher would cut a few ribs out of that. But I can I can count the amount of people that I know in my life that have never seen an actual living cow mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> stood by a freaking cow. Mm -hmm. And I think a good field trip would be it's like show them what's happening. It's like it's it's. It's natural and it's good. It's like people should be in a slaughterhouse once. It would change your meat consumption. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would love to see people starting to <coughs> and that's kill. A, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, to, to kill their food at least sure. once. Like, and I'm not saying go, like, uh, go crazy and kill a cow because that would be very, very, very hard to achieve, mm -hmm. especially with our health laws. But you can kill fish. Mm -hmm. Go fish, bang it with a rolling pin. It's like mm -hmm. Take life you will instantly respect it because we're mm -hmm. not geared to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we disconnected totally. It's like all, all our foods now is coming vacuum packed. If not cooked, it's already like <coughs> beautified to the, it's like it's a tenderloin. Mm -hmm. And it's a beef tenderloin. Mm -hmm. I mean, beef belongs to a cow. <laughs> and that cow was alive 27 days ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's very good to not dissociate. But on the other hand, once you dissociate, then I can start telling you, it's like, oh, do you want uh, like uh, uh, one kilo of tenderloin for yourself to eat today? Do you, still, you don't need that. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I think yeah. it, it comes with appreciation of uh, utilizing the whole, you know, the whole product. Because uh, uh, essentially that's what it becomes, right? But mm -hmm. at the same time, how do you sort of, because you, you seem uh, very... Um, sure of yourself in terms of your convictions maybe to some extent but how do you sort of create that balance within yourself that you know to some extent knowing that you work in the industry that sort of um, allows things like that's this to go on but at the same time I, I guess that leads into a question again well, I'm part of the solution, oh, yeah right? yeah mm -hmm. like how do, how do you ensure that you source a specific type of uh, you know protein mm -hmm. do you ensure that mm -hmm. this this uh, meat was you know like was butchered from a cow within like say 24 hours, right? And then you make sure that you Remember utilize that it right if away. You, if, you, yeah. if you know the person that goes to a cow, <laughs> I do. Yeah, exactly. Good, mm. okay. I do and I will, I ju just like you would not put your mm -hmm. kid in a school that you didn't mm -hmm. TikTok to the teacher, mm. I would not feed myself or my customers because everything my customers eat, I do too. Mm. Because I taste it, right, all along. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna feed them with, with a cow that I did not personally speak to the person mm -hmm. that grows mm -hmm. it, didn't personally speak to the person that kills it, and didn't personally speak to the person that conveys it to me and butchers it and ages it and mm -hmm. takes mm -hmm. care of it. I mean, yeah. it's like, we need to know our food sources mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, I think that's, that's an extremely important point that we, you bring yeah. up. Mm -hmm. um, we made it, mm -hmm. we made it to the point that we're saying we don't have time for this. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. needed to start that, 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 that's like, same argument I could have it's like you don't have time to meet the teacher of your kid mm -hmm. so how do most people I guess then ensure that maybe they try to you know stick to the same convictions to some extent as well small they, businesses small business. so support get, get small businesses mm -hmm. but it's like you don't yeah. you don't buy product mm -hmm. you you support people mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the likelihood that your neighborhood small 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 butcher doesn't know the person that grows the cows that he is selling mm -hmm. is very, very low. So develop, I'm not saying go to the farms mm -hmm. because they're outside of the city and we need to choose, yeah. pick and choose our battles, right? Mm -hmm. But get to know the butcher. Mm -hmm. Talk to the person if, and there are very simple answers that if you don't have the answers to, I know that you're a part of the problem. I mean, who grew the cow? Ask them if they don't know the name. You probably shouldn't be shopping there. <laughs> yeah. have, you can make your own conclusions for sure. I mean, yeah. and, and there, there are levels of accountability. I mean, um, my butcher can tell you the name of the cow mm -hmm. that you're eating. That's incredible. 
uh, I'm working with a spice vendor from uh, Saskatchewan. She can give you the plot number that mm -hmm. the spices came from mm -hmm. in every country. Mm -hmm. So, and, and again, this is what I do for a living and this is mm -hmm. my passion. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying everybody should be as much as I am, mm -hmm. but yes, developing a relationship with the people that grow your food very I think it's very very hard. I think it's as mm -hmm. important as yeah. knowing your kids' teacher. Mm -hmm. And it comes it comes with a price because uh, sometimes a person wants a certain cut, mm -hmm. and we're like, no, we, we don't work like that. Like there's mm -hmm. there are only a certain amount of animals, and at different times they get butchered. So we have different animals at different times. Not just mm -hmm. that. I'm different not saying parts. if you want a tenderloin, I'm, and and yeah. and I ran out of tenderloin of that cow. I'm not going to kill a new cow for that. Yeah, yeah. we need to use the so other parts. That's very true. You know, yeah. because we need yeah. to respect the animals. So there is a philosophy beyond everything. There is a philosophy there. So it comes to a situation where I need to talk with clients and be like, this is our philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. And you don't hire a certain cut. Mm -hmm. You hire a chef. Sure. Mm -hmm. And the chef is going to make mm -hmm. something interesting out of different cuts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you need to put your trust. You put your trust in an artist, um, and for some people it's it's hard, uh, but uh, but then they're very proud of themselves because you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they gave you that trust, and then they gave you that and trust. in, in turn yeah, they yeah. received and something it's the same with vegetables spectacular, right? Because mm -hmm. um, it's very important to have the right balance because between protein and vegetables, especially when it comes to thirteen course meal, seven course meal that we do. And Even wine the two course meal, it's like you don't need that much animal yeah. protein. I'm sorry. And, and like you're not going to feel that us. great. Mm. And also, you're not going to feel that great mm -hmm. physically after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I know everyone wants to have, like, oh, let's only have stars on the menu, so all mm -hmm. animals. And it's like a person doesn't need to eat so many animals. Mm -hmm. It's actually not good for you. Mm -hmm. um, and we basically we passed that philosophy. and. To be honest, like I think it's quite successful so far. Like mm -hmm. I barely had any people who said like, "Oh, we're gonna move to someone else because of that." Mm -hmm. They're like, "Okay, we trust you. You know mm -hmm. what you're doing." And then we bring extra education at the day, at the mm -hmm. evening itself, and they get something different. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the thing. And and everything's like our our inhumanity, our our consumption, all that. Like it translates to economy. It translates mm -hmm. to the way we can run small businesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's, it's a support system that we, when we choose to comply to the idea of, oh, I don't have time for this. <laughs> <laughs> when we comply, because the only, the only people that would stop it mm -hmm. is us. The only way to, to make a revolution is from the people. Mm -hmm. not from the I, people. I agree. It's, it starts with small changes from people trying to apply them and then yeah. as, as it becomes almost like a movement it, yeah, it grows into that. The world and, and, and it, it tells the you know big corporations no this is what the consumer wants right yeah. mm -hmm. and then I was gonna yeah. that actually leads me to another question mm -hmm. uh, you know going back to vegetables I think that maybe people just have this misperception specifically maybe uh, to some extent maybe to blame the Americans and the, by Americans I mean United States by you know having these humongous portion sizes right mm -hmm. and because yeah. if you if you go to europe your typical portion sizes are so exactly. much smaller mm -hmm. and having myself lived in like netherlands for a year and studied there when i came back i was just shocked yeah because mm -hmm. I remember, like, yeah. even if i'd say about like even like a smaller steak mm -hmm. and when i came to the store here the, the portion sizes are just yep. humongous right mm -hmm. because and it, 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 mind the, you yeah the, the way we farm here mm -hmm. we get much bigger cows sure mm -hmm. of course. so for me to give you a tenderloin it's like when if, if you'll buy a cow from big agriculture down in brazil and mm -hmm. south america what you're getting from like the, the department stores they grow them that way mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. grow them that giant it's like it's profit it's like once you mm -hmm. stop thinking about animal welfare why once you stop thinking about your health once you stop thinking about anything but money mm -hmm. then you're starting to grow diseased cows mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and well that's where mad cow started as well for right? us so to be like misinformed that. by choice sure. right it's like if you're asking people about deforestation mm -hmm. what's the main reason and people say oh no we need to use less paper like are you shitting me <laughs> like where is that even coming from it's like the, the biggest deforestation that is happening right now is for the meat industry mm -hmm. we're cutting trees to grow more cows as if we need more cows mm -hmm. and 
that's the major pollutant as well. It's like and greenhouse uh, gases exactly. too, but which nobody ever talks about. Mm -hmm. that of course, because that's, that's a strong giant lobby. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That does things the same way in the States that mm -hmm. they did with tobacco and other things. Mm -hmm. But again, the revolution would come from us saying, I want to be informed. Mm -hmm. I don't want to buy this. Mm -hmm. uh, size doesn't matter. I don't need um, a, a half a kilo steak for myself because mm -hmm. I'm human. I'm not a lion. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's it's all the mystification, overglorification, and the 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 the, the beliefs of mm -hmm. I'm not accountable. Mm -hmm. I'm not killing a cow. Mm -hmm. I'm just eating a steak. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. you're killing a cow. Mm -hmm. I think the portion size is what was leading me into the question with vegetables because there's so much mass production mm -hmm. yeah. and hence because of that there's so much pesticide used exactly. and so many mm -hmm. additional okay. modifications to that are happening to the veggies and stuff like that that people don't really even know like what a real zucchini might taste like or what a yeah. real tomato tastes like exactly. and it's i think that there's not enough education maybe about the soil you're right and mm -hmm. how it's grown and, and how often it's used and what, when it's drained of nutrients completely too and then how that affects the taste of things too and or the surroundings the air the water, ev the pollution, everything that's happening, right? So and there's again, so many things that are taken into we account. We love absolutes, yeah. right? Yeah. So we're mm -hmm. saying, oh, you want to grow less cows? Fine, let's be vegan. Mm -hmm. Now, if the whole population of the world moved to veganism, we're talking about a new problem, and, and yeah. it's easy to, to, to not see it and to, you know, to, to say, oh, now we'll be righteous and great, and we won't torture <laughs> animals. Great, mm -hmm. but now you will start having um, annuals, and plants that don't grow roots mm -hmm. uh, you'll spray a lot to, mm -hmm. to grow everything there'll be no animals eating the, the, the all the pests and everything because there's no reason for me to bring in a herd of cows if I'm not killing them to feed somebody so I'm not gonna grow them because at the end of the day it is a business mm -hmm. so I'm gonna grow annuals and I'm gonna spray the field and because nothing holds to the ground Rain's gonna take it to our rivers, and then you'll have it's like you're seeing that in in down by Florida when there's like a whole pocket of sea that doesn't grow anything, and mm -hmm. that's partly the uh, manure of animals, but also partly a lot of pesticides that are running from agriculture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is Did washed because nothing is holding to the ground because everything is annual. Do you think it's be it's mm -hmm. because we're uh, almost disturbing? The natural cycle of things too. Of course, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's because we are the first species, and and that is the problem. Mm -hmm. We are the only species that does not regulate. We keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. And Excesses, right? And, when I talked, like, I, I had a discussion with my uncle about mm -hmm. it. It's like, well, if we have less than two kids a family, that's negative growth. And I'm like, good. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what we need. There's too many humans. <laughs> That's true. Mm. We're destroying, it's like we're not thinking, and, and I'm not, animals are not thinking about this, but animals do that naturally. They self regulate their, their amounts. Like you won't see there's like there's not enough to support this amount of lions because once there's too many lions, lions would start dying, gazelles mm -hmm. would start to be more, and mm -hmm. then more lions. Like it's self regulating, mm -hmm. but humans don't self regulate at all. It's like we keep going and going, and the world's trying to get rid of us, mm -hmm. tried it a few times, mm -hmm. and we're defying it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we will get to the point that it's like we are destroying this thing at this point. Mm -hmm. I, th I think there's lots of uninhabited land though, and I think that the problem is also is that we're always trying to almost stick like a, like a herd together, mm -hmm. and yeah. I think if we spread out people a lot more across the this but planet... Then, but then we need to rethink um, contribution sure. and society. Mm. And I think it's a leadership. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of global questions for sure. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, if we want to stay capitalist, mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to see you. The, the so that, that, brings, brings me, that brings me to another question too: is yeah. how do you like? I, I, I get what you're trying to do, and in terms of maybe almost not really even educating people, but telling them, listen, just trust us. This is what we, we're doing. This is how we, we're professional in our fields allow us to present the experience to you, right? But at the same time, if you come into contact with a client that maybe you have different, you know, uh, political views or whether it be different opinions of food or mm -hmm. some stuff like that, how, when do you know for yourself 
you know, when do you tell your conscience, I don't want to work with this person? Or like, when, do. When, when, when do you cut off I, that I, business? I always but want to work but, with but, that but, but at the same time, like, you know, like, where, where do you find that balance for yourself? Because it's almost like if you believe in something strongly enough, especially maybe let's say like food, right? Mm -hmm. And if the person is very pushy and they're, they're very opinionated and they're trying to push that onto you, when do you know to cut it off? And when do you know to just kind of, you know, put your head down and you just keep working kind of thing, right? Because even though you're working for yourself, you're still finding that you're working for somebody else because yeah. you're, you're exactly. working for a client, right? Yeah. So, well, like so what, how do you find that medium, like, mm -hmm. that, that kind of thing? A beautiful quote from uh, one of, uh, well, sketchy personality, Charlie Trotter, okay. uh, who, who <laughs> was a big chef and a great contributor to the world in culinary, but mm -hmm. then wasn't that straight when it comes to labor and other things. <laughs> um, he said that the customer is always, always right. Sorry, the customer is rarely right but the customer also pays the bill. The mm -hmm. customer is always a customer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's like I, we do get to the point sometimes if we have to fire a client, mm -hmm. because it's, it's so far-fetched yeah. from what I'm willing to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That said, I, I would try to convince the client, and in, some, in a lot of cases I would say, well, I believe this is wrong, mm -hmm. I hope you'll trust me, but if not, this is what you're getting. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. I mean, even if your client wants, like, the, the, the biggest thing for me is that I tell stories through food. Mm -hmm. And when they would come to me and say, oh, I'm not in love with this dish. I'm like, okay, let's, let's unpack the story of, uh, say, Cinderella. Mm -hmm. um, do you like the evil mother? The answer would be no. Okay, good, you're a sane human. Um, can we have the story without the evil mother? Can, can we make her nicer? I mean, mm -hmm. Would the story still work? Mm -hmm. So we need the evil mother. We need her as a character to be there because she's cardinal to the story. Okay, that's why we need this dish. And I'm not saying this is a disgusting dish, but this dish, it's like to A, to be in like 13 points of catharsis, it's it's horrible. It's a horrible state to be <laughs> it's in. It's like, and that's what you, you, you usually need, get. You need like things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus, how do I if I'm if I'm deconstructing storytelling and like, let's say film mm -hmm. in Terminator, how sure. do you know that Schwarzenegger is that strong? If I had all the cast would be as like muscular and buff as he is, you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But when I face him, the big big face off is with. A, kind of strong character and everything mentally and everything but the build is like Alex's mm -hmm. then like, oh Schwarzenegger is so muscular mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need the reference right so in order for you to really enjoy the beef dish I need something that contrasts it in a way mm -hmm. as well so that's the art of telling a story mm -hmm. and I try for them to trust me sometimes they don't and in most cases it's like oh I didn't trust you this time next dinner well let mm -hmm. you just do whatever it Mm -hmm. I get what you said so yeah. I, I do believe in relationships right like I don't want to lose clients mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. just for the money but also because I think I can get to them sometimes yes yeah, sometimes we get to them and eventually. sometimes you don't yeah. and it's okay mm -hmm. yeah. it's like mm -hmm. even if I got to them on some level even if I pushed one agenda even if I touched them in one way or another it's like it's good mm -hmm. So, so who, who are like uh, m most of your clients? Like I believe you said earlier families, but are they like families with young children? And like, because like, for me, like I would mm -hmm. think just like those are probably the ones that, you know, would be have the most time constraints. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just could you tell us maybe a little bit about like your, would, your clientele? And I think that they would have the most resistance too, because yeah. you're trying to fit <laughs> kids, like, kids something that really they might have not tried before. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's true. Yeah. Like, yeah. Chef and film, so yeah, yeah, usually the, yeah. Yeah. Like, the wine is also like such a big thing. So sure. usually, right. and sometimes people ask us, so oh, can you do something mm -hmm. for the kids? Mm -hmm. um, and then I give them options. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's it's usually more of a grown up experience sure. unless mm -hmm. your kids, some kids are extreme foodies. Mm -hmm. And like, we actually had an event where it was nine grown ups and six kids. The grown ups went all wild and were like talking about anything else. The kids were fascinated about the food and talked about asking the food questions. the whole evening, mm -hmm. asking the chef questions and everything. So you never know, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, but generally speaking, especially if these are young kids, like what we recommend is, okay, why don't you put them asleep mm -hmm. 
and then we'll start the dinner mm-hmm. like at eight like at eight o'clock sure. or closer to nine o'clock and then we can start the dinner or find a solution uh, because it is a longer experience and it's it's usually more for it's a three four hours yeah mm. and, and that then that the past experience that you've had was did you guys have to make different dishes for the kids too, or was it all sometimes. The, was it all the same? Um, it depends. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we just sim- sometimes chef just simplifies it mm-hmm. for them, mm-hmm. makes it less like you know with weird ingredients or mm-hmm. things that but are. But on the other hand, well, when the flowers, the, kids, fl- the flavors to speak for themselves too. Just feed off the your parents. emotional mm-hmm. reaction. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So if you don't see that as weird, mm-hmm. exactly. they don't see that as weird. Then yeah. they're absolutely mirroring your mm-hmm. it depends on their parents behavior. a lot. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, it really yeah. depends on their parents. But generally speaking, like a lot of our dinners are uh, very special celebrations of 20 years anniversary or birthdays, mm-hmm. um, things that are connected to family, but to the grown-up part of the family. Mm-hmm. So you it's usually like order a pizza for the kids and yeah, put them the, in bed like, after. Yeah, and, yeah. Because mm-hmm. um, also yeah. the kids won't have the attention span to sit there and go through a four-hour food talks mm-hmm. and wine yeah. and all that. Yeah. Um, the attention spans, especially mm-hmm. in North America, yeah, very, exactly. very short. And you know, dedicating Europe, four or four, yeah, but yeah. it's a big thing. Yeah, like it's, mm-hmm. it's, I think, it's I think long. It's, at that mm-hmm. point, people call us because it's us, because mm-hmm. um, they know we are doing something very, very different, and we are very different in our scene. And they heard about it from about us from someone else. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, at this point, like. Um, even when there is a dis- business advice number even two, when there is a disagree- <laughs> even when there is a dis- disagreement, they know our reputation, and we keep our reputation also through really insisting on explaining to the client what we are doing, and really having them understand that it's like you walk in a museum. If the artist painted those pictures because they know that people are gonna love it, mm. you're gonna sense it. Oh, and that's not going to be art. It's not going to be an expression of the artist. When you're going to walk in a museum and see different pictures of that artist and certain evolution, then you'll get a story, you'll get an experience. Mm. But so I, that's I, the I same as you, other yeah. dinners. So mm. I basically always try to tell them, like, you know, you, you, hire a sh- you hire a chef, you hire an artist, let them walk you through it. Mm-hmm. You know, certain things you're gonna love more than others, ta 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 ta, ta but you'll you'll go through an experience more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that actually leads me to the question about um, always having you know that uh, being in that sort of state of mind of like loving and actually enjoying the preparation and the cooking process, mm-hmm. because it definitely translates into food yeah. and then the way yes, it tastes. Exactly. How do you ensure that you yourself personally? Are you know are sort of set in that s- s- state of mind? Mm-hmm. Do you like have any specific thing that you like you know rituals or whatever, whether it be like concentrating or meditating or stuff like that that allows you to mm-hmm. kind of get into that zone? Like what what process do you go through? When I get t- out of it, I'll tell you if I need to do something. <laughs> I've been in it for yeah. it's automatic. It's just a switch that just years. just like, comes that's out. What I love yeah, that's yeah, what I do. sure. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the, the, the biggest thing that is the enemy of a small business or anything is like when you lose the passion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you lost the passion, I think there's so much to do in the world. Mm-hmm. Just go ahead. Yeah. Just do something else if you don't like it. Mm-hmm. I, I don't like suffering. I think it's also about evolution and always being able to reinvent yourself too mm-hmm. sometimes, right? Exactly. So, to adapt. N- yeah, to, yeah exactly, to adapt. To adapt. Change, to find something. But also, like you, you said, you said, mm-hmm. you're utilizing some of the skills that you might have mm-hmm. and, you know, utilizing that for your benefit too, right? So And al- mm-hmm. always change. Don't be afraid of changing mm-hmm. things. Even though you think, oh, that's what is already successful. It doesn't matter. If your passion is not there anymore because you feel like you start repeating mm-hmm. yourself, mm-hmm. then like change. move ahead, change. Like trust the fact that people will call you because it's you. And that's mm-hmm. a big difference between us and corporations. Because it's us. Like they call us because of the passion more than anything else. The passion, the knowledge, mm-hmm. the experience. These are the things that are not going to disappear. It doesn't matter if we change our concept. Well, especially if that's your there. marketing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we exactly. are our, our biggest marketing strategy right now mm-hmm. and for the past three years is word of mouth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, the minute if, if I come to your home and I relay that passion to you and mm-hmm. I relay that this is what matters the slowdown the passion the connectivity the moment all that then that's what you mm-hmm. transfer to the next person that comes to me mm-hmm. on the other hand it's like if, if I'm a big corporation that's the last thing I need because then I need to trust 
so, individuals yeah. and mm -hmm. it's like so mm -hmm. i want to be like oh, you're getting this box yeah <laughs> so as a small business mm -hmm. the biggest thing would be it's like drop the boxes it's like, be yeah. out of them mm -hmm. because they are the thing that's going to sell it's like, there's mm -hmm. no way you can compete and how do you uh, I'm, I'm sure that you, you can't always be a hundred percent and especially with you you know to some extent being a one-man show because you're in the kitchen right mm -hmm. how, have you had any uh, off days and how were you able to recover from that or like be able to sort of nobody you know, knows along, yeah. right it's like the only person that mm -hmm. knows anything mm -hmm. is in front of you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so no one nobody, nobody the bullet knows and you yeah. do it it's like nobody knows what was my plan mm -hmm. and even if today i woke up without the passion for it a sometimes the minute i'll get into it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll get in the mood sometimes I won't and well you're paying me so <laughs> the difference that's being a professional right? that's being you a just, that's, a well, that's, that's what being a business is yeah. for right? you put right? yourself so, yeah. there you yeah. put yourself in that place it doesn't matter what because mm -hmm. you're a professional mm -hmm. otherwise you're an amateur right? mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the true. difference like, mm -hmm. the big but difference would be yeah that we can fake it but yeah mm -hmm. and, or, and, and, and I don't know what he's saying you are I'm, I'm just trying, trying to kind start of start faking mm -hmm. it yeah, and then sure. you make it already you know yeah, like as yeah. soon as you step into it um, mm -hmm. or as soon as you just need a distraction like you know to talk to some to a friend about something mm -hmm. totally different mm -hmm. and then it lifts your spirit a little bit and then you're ready for it sure. so there are many mm. ways to... Well, and, and I think that even my flat line is You're still very, very unique no one would and know. strong. Nobody would know. Even mm -hmm. days mm -hmm. that are like a little bit down, like, yeah, no uh, one will I, know. I think once you've put in enough time into it, exactly. it almost comes natural, it's right? A, it's, it's, yeah. it's almost like a, like a second nature and I, exactly. I, I get that. I'm just trying to kind of yeah. not really fish, but sort of get in a grasp of how do you deal with difficult and or stressful you situations try. You try sometimes hard. your mind can be off too right because yeah. you, you you can't always be 100 percent. so i think improvisation might be something that plays into effect but also i think experience obviously and self over there's, time there's, right? there's so. way of meditating and mm -hmm. other thing mm -hmm. but at yeah. the end of the day understanding mm -hmm. that like if you you just kind of get into that zone and you just yeah. and you have to yeah. do something mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you 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 strive to get to that inspiration but if it doesn't come it doesn't come it's fine it's okay it's like as long as you're doing you're giving people yeah. what they paid for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's focusing on the simple things, on the technicalities. Mm -hmm. Because if you come from the bottom, and that's the amazing thing, like because we come from like really the bottom. If you come from the bottom, you love the simple things of your job. Like mm -hmm. right now they're like new sommeliers and they're like, So what? All I'm gonna do is like pour wine for people and that's it. And it's like <laughs> that's what, what you did do. you think you're gonna do? And like second, this is a privilege. Like working with wine mm -hmm. is a privilege. Period. And the mm. fact that you can pour it for people and many times taste it yourself <coughs> and get educated educated about it or educate other people, like this is amazing. Mm -hmm. So you need to enjoy that giving, giving that juice. Mm -hmm. It's good juice, sharing. especially yeah. sharing that, like that giving aspect. That's the real hospitality. That that's the heart of the thing. That's why I see a big difference between. Somalias that just went and did some papers and Somalias that actually started as like bussers, servers because mm -hmm. they have the hospitality gene mm -hmm. in them because mm -hmm. that's that's what you basically do you mm -hmm. want to give to people and that's that's the moment it's, it's so if you love simple things life, you go right? back to those simple mm -hmm. things and you get joy from it because it's your nature mm -hmm. you know and then yeah. the, the more and then the, happens, the more yeah. the, the less pragmatic you are and the less that you're set in some certain courses the, the better you are in life not even in business mm -hmm. in everything yeah. mm -hmm. i mean if you're going to med school and you have the absolute one singular dream of being a brain surgeon how many brain surgeons do we need mm -hmm. yeah. i mean the chances that you'll be uh, in general practitician Pretty high we kind of you know. need more of those now if you mm -hmm. really see it as torture to mm -hmm. be that mm -hmm. wrong profession yeah. and I don't see that's and that's what I'm missing in schools mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like when I see culinary schools I don't I see the teachers yes saying that cooking is a privilege and all that and all those like beautiful slogans that I preach for and I want them but at the end of the day if you are not going to enjoy being the lowest chain in the kitchen as it's like the, the lowest chain cook mm -hmm. in there mm -hmm. I'm not sure it's the right profession because mm -hmm. we need in every kitchen we need one chef that's mm -hmm. it 
So it's right. almost like being humble in, in your profession, right? Enjoying it. Enjoying it. It's like, I'm not sure it's humility. It's like, it's do you enjoy the job itself? Mm -hmm. Because the likelihood that you won't be in the highest positions of management is higher because, again, it's like in every profession, we need one manager mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and many, many workers. So if you're getting into it and you don't want to be the worker, you, you will suffer as the worker, you're mm -hmm. in the wrong profession. Mm -hmm. So business advice number three, point four, um, <laughs> get into something you care for, you like. You, you, the, the, you, the, something that you can see yourself being the worker in mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the likelihood that you won't make it in is business, giant. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Giant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To speak a little bit more, maybe about um, the, uh, the Somalia end of things, because I think the chefs has been has, has been popularized so much, mm -hmm. and maybe that spectrum of the you know the wine, the the, the complementary thing, is not really maybe as well known to the masses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, with also just just speaking from my own experience, I've worked with this. Um, um, wine grower in Ontario, mm -hmm. um, in the Niagara region, and the, uh, we were studying. I was when I was in school. I was studying the process of manufacturing and production, mm -hmm. and we we came in and we've just approached them, and just by chance we were able to gain um, a lot of insight as to, I guess, all the different aspects of production as well. And one of the most, I guess, um, interesting and probably shocking things that I've learned was that. The way that the grapes are produced, a lot of the times they'll combine little bugs, ladybirds, and everything else, mm -hmm. and how that in itself affects the taste of the wine, and how that in itself is essentially what the mass-produced product is, and how you know the there's actually wine out there that has you know the, the different type of body. The it depends on where it's grown and things that that sort yeah. of play into into that as well. Maybe you can elaborate more, uh, you know, to to our listeners as to the state of the industry and how it is and what is it that actually you're getting sometimes when you're getting good quality wines, right? So maybe you can, you can talk about that. Uh, I think it, it goes down to knowing the people as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, the same as knowing the butcher. Uh, know your winemaker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, meet them in person and see the integrity and see how much they <coughs> care beyond just the numbers of profit. Um, because um, the more natural you go, the more it costs you, but the better it is for Earth. And many times the quality is going to be even better. Uh, and um, consistency is going. It's and it's a philosophy as well. Going. It's a philosophy as well because um, if you go to Europe, for example, where you have more natural wine, and I'm not talking about having the label of natural mm -hmm. wine, but uh, naturally, they have a practice that is biodynamic because that's how it has been passed for generations and sure. generations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have sometimes 14 uh, genera generations behind them. No, they're not going to change those things. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. part of their um, heritage. You know, that's more important than money. It's more important than anything. They will actually die for it. Mm -hmm. well, I, 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 I it, bet, you know? yeah, especially you know, if it's been 14 people. generations exactly. of, you know, in the so, family. So right? actually, like, for example, like people come to me and they're like, oh, I get headaches from wine. And I'm like, do you try wines from France? Um, oh, not so much. I drink mainly from these specific regions. And I'm like, yeah, because there is a philosophy to the winemaker. Mm -hmm. If the winemaker sees themselves as like, uh, at the top of the pyramid and the whole world and animals and and uh, plants are beyond them and they can do whatever they basically want mm -hmm. then it's one approach if they see themselves as part of the circle of life you know they're important animals are important and we all influence each mm -hmm. other then the way they practice in the vineyard is going to be the same so if they care for the animals in the vineyard they care for them if they don't if they th if they see only their profit mm -hmm. you're going to taste the difference and right? feel the difference it's, it's almost like a mm -hmm. chef putting in passion into preparation process it's right. almost it's the same the, the chef yeah. is the sum yeah. of mm -hmm. ingredients as mm -hmm. well it's like mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. and and what you see on tv a lot is like um pedestals for ego oh, yeah. where mm -hmm. at the end all i am is i i, I use product mm -hmm. so Yes, there is the aspect. I mean, if all we're looking at is tasty, and that's what we glorify so much, mm -hmm. yeah, I can take four cans and make it tasty. Yeah. It's like that's 
-hmm. not the big deal. Uh, do I have something to say? Am I bringing something else to the table? I mean, it's like tasty is a prerequisite. Obviously, it's like if you if you become a, I I hear like discussions about chefs like the food is so tasty, the food is so good. It's like okay, do you hear that on cab drives for that sake? Oh, that cab driver is very good. He he always gets me to the right address. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that what they're supposed to do? It's like, would yeah. you hire a cab driver yeah. that doesn't get you to the right So it's almost like you're, you're doing your profession, yeah. and that's yeah, what you yeah. should be delivering, exactly. and it's almost like you're getting praised for it. Yeah, I, I hear what you're yeah. saying. I mean, yeah. The food yeah. is so tasty. Yeah, the cab driver took me to the right place. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I would talk about the cab driver that doesn't take me to the right place. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> was there extra value? Was the cab smelling nice? Was he asking me if... I like the music. Mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. if I'm cold, hot, it's like, was there extra service? Mm -hmm. That one I'll talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the actual delivery, it's like, uh -huh. so tasty food, yes, it's like, that's what we do, obviously. But what else am I bringing? And the same yeah. with going wine. It's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if we're looking, there are certain regions on earth for wine that I've never tasted bad wine from them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what I'm selling is the, the art in the bottle, the family story, the passion of the winemaker, the, the story of the winemaker, the story of the wine, the story of the vineyard, the history, and, and that's loaded and, and it has a value in taste. Yeah, mm. and the, the great thing about uh, uh, my, what that I do is that I, I get to travel around the world and meet some of those winemakers mm -hmm. as well. So when I come to clients with bottles, they, they became my friends mm -hmm. basically so it's like you talking about your friends I talk about them and what did they do uh, which I think brings that something very very Extra, special about sure. it and there is a reason why I choose those specific bottles and not other bottles most of the bottles that I bring to clients they have never tasted them before mm -hmm. so in that sense it's very very different than the work in a restaurant in a restaurant, you, you mainly sell bottles that people know already. Mm -hmm. um, there is a small, small percentage of uh, flexibility there. Sometimes you have clients that you know, let you kind of walk you through the seller and give you something interesting, but it's, it's, it's quite rare. But it's also a matter um, of trust there, right? It's a mm -hmm. and that's like the thing. For, it's a for me to walk into a restaurant, yeah. tell you, oh, mm -hmm. no, just surprise me. But that's <laughs> the that thing. That means that I'm trusting you. Yeah, and why would I trust you if mm -hmm. most restaurants are corporations? But, mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing. So there are several sommeliers. You always have a different sommelier. So you don't know what the palate of that sommelier is. Um, you don't it's know bad. if they just left school like a few months ago or whatever. But when it comes to us, like I write about wine. Mm. Um, so they all already know what I know, mm -hmm. where I travel, because I expose that on social media. And that's why if you are self-employed, if you have your own company, you have to promote yourself as an individual, basically, mm -hmm. in any way that you can. If you make money of it as an extra or you do not, it doesn't matter because people will know you by the fact that you are there and you are active all the time. Um, so yeah, so like social media exposure, you as a person, as a person who travels the world, taste wines with winemakers, talk about it and everything. That's what brings your reputation mm -hmm. as a sommelier up. And your life. And your life. And, and your life. Mm -hmm. Everything in your life. And like because would, would of that, my our clientele they just like they let me bring whatever I want basically, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the fun part, you know. So I can never get bored because. I can always bring something different, you mm -hmm. know, and keep my passion up. And it's it's quite similar with the else food. We don't have set menus. And mm -hmm. people ask me, just send me samples. I'm like, we don't work like that. They don't go to corporations. <laughs> they will give you set menus. They only have four. Sure. You know, they will. We well, do not the, do the that. little bit more adventurous menu, the very mm -hmm. standard menu. We menus, do not do like it that, because yeah. of many reasons. Yeah. Also, yeah. because you want something with passion. Mm -hmm. Something with passion is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. Except yeah. for the fact that they always give you consistency of who they truly are. Mm -hmm. But the ingredients will change, everything will change. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And that's why it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you, um, obviously you must have some sort of an evolution of taste as well with, with wines though, mm -hmm. right? So how does that affect maybe him and his preparation of his food as well? And or how do you find that balance always, right? So. Because I mean, obviously, there's some, there's always has to be some sort of a progression as well, right? Well, and, we, and you, as a yeah. professional and as 
as a specialist in, in this kind of, kind of field, right? So well, we work as as, as a, a cohesive unit. unit so sure. even when I go to not mm -hmm. not to every tasting, but mm -hmm. to many tastings, I will go with chef. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so so we we are both together in everything, basically, right? Like we each do our thing, um, but we're both, we're, both, we're both there to protect our perspective, like field. Mm -hmm. I represent the food, she represents the wine. Mm -hmm. But again, at the end of the day, and I, I had that discussion with a few restaurateurs, like at the end of the day, when somebody comes into the restaurant, what they remember is the experience. So if you yeah. don't care about any aspect of the experience, mm -hmm. you're saying, oh, I'm, I'm the chef, I only care about the food. I'm like, okay, <laughs> fine. But mind you, yeah. the customer doesn't remember that. I mean, th they would remember that the food was spectacular, let's say. Mm -hmm. but there is an experience that they're going through and that's what you sell mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. and the wider yeah. wider view yeah mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with you I, yeah. I think that it's sometimes you can have a really memorable moment in the most of unexpected places mm -hmm. and you it does sort of create maybe like a completely different perspective and or memory for you as mm -hmm. well whereas you can go into like something that you almost like expect to have like the quality and sometimes it can be a completely different experience from that too, right? So Exactly. And, and it's, it's, it's also the yeah. moment mm. and, and the creation of whatever. It's like if, if you will have a dinner in a certain restaurant with say somebody that you do like and then two weeks later you'll have the same food in the same restaurant that is done m absolutely same recipe manufactured corporation that mm -hmm. doesn't taste different but you'd have a date that is not successful and you hate the person that is far for you, mm -hmm. the food would taste different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why I come not set. That's why I change according to, it's like I, I have a plan, I wrote a menu for you, but I need to get into the atmosphere and see where I am mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. yeah. change accordingly. Mm -hmm. and it's like that's what I sell. What I sell is the reaction instead of like, this is this. Mm. You gotta be also very intuitive because, like, the, they have to walk through an amazing experience. And sometimes, if your host, for example, or someone else doesn't feel great, mm. uh, yeah, great. You have I have my lecture about the wine. He all has the food. Da 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 da. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But if the person is not in a good mood, that's the first thing you need to fix. <laughs> that, that's so, true. Yeah. So you gotta always figure out, okay, what am I attacking for the whole picture, and mm. put yourself outside of it because. Uh, the problem is in our industry, as chefs and sommeliers, there is a reason why they do not collaborate. Mm -hmm. Because usually chefs have big egos and sommeliers have big egos as well. Mm -hmm. And that's why they don't like working together, because they compete on egos. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is the whole experience and you how it comes together. How, how no, it I, is I, the most important. <laughs> but how it actually all comes together, that's what's going to sell you as a company. So yeah. it's always like looking at it globally as like, yes, I'm a sommelier, yes, I'm a chef, but I'm first and foremost, like I'm the owner of this company, mm. you know, and of this business mm -hmm. and everything together needs to work. That's the most important thing. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like doing that zoom out all the time. And that's why I found your concept very interesting and different because I, I don't really typically see that, right? Yeah. Where the, the two mm -hmm. collaborate. And I think that obviously it, it, it's very complimentary that the two of you mm -hmm have been have known each other for so long that it almost balances each, each other out one a last quick question that i wanted to, to touch base on specifically about the chef part was with you it's a little bit more of a challenge because your the food usually has a lot shorter of a shelf life whereas mm -hmm. with wine you can you know it, it can be barreled it can be yeah. stored yeah. for a prolonged period of time how do you Obviously, you get affected by seasonal food and things that are brought in. Mm -hmm. How do you tr uh, do? You find it challenging more so maybe in winter time, and you know being able to find certain things. Twenty nineteen, we yeah. have airplanes. No, for sure, but <laughs> but then uh, you don't. Do, how do you know? How do you keep in touch with the people that have grown those vegetables? Because if if you fall in the footsteps of what you were saying, yes. right? How, how is, would it not be a lot more challenging to you? Then, it is. Right? So it is to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. I can, and I lose some touch mm -hmm. with some vegetables. Sure. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Again, like um, I, I trust my, I, I, I put my trust in the person that chooses the vegetables for the store. Mm -hmm. uh, he trusts the other chain. I try to know as many people in the chain. I mean, when we're talking about, let's say, animals, um, I, I know the farmers, but I go there once every <coughs> year or two. Sure. My butcher goes there every week, mm -hmm. maybe even twice a week. So 
I trust my relationship, my real strong relationship is with the butcher. And I just want to see at least who are the people that he chooses. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, I, I can't micromanage. And that's oh, something for sure, yeah. we, we love having like full yeah. control on everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> a time, I mean, all those farms are four hours away from Toronto. I'm not doing that travel every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, so it's like when, when, when I'm talking vegetables in the winter, I'm looking at things that either things that I did mm -hmm. do preservation on. So I mm. do pickle things and mm -hmm. um, dry things. Um, I, I kind of lose touch with some of them on, on the fact that I know the person that chose those vegetables from abroad, but they're coming from somewhere. So it's almost like you put, put your trust in the, your supplier and to, to, to deliver for you what it is that uh, you have specific, uh, I guess, set out expectations for him mm -hmm. for right so and and there's a way mm -hmm. to know that it's like right mm -hmm. like w when, when i meet a lot of my suppliers i'm like um i, I would call them i'm like how how is, how is this product mm -hmm. that i saw on your website and like you you don't even like it they they know what mm -hmm. i want they know my yeah. standards so you get to the point that you create that relationship mm -hmm. and that's why i i i want to invest in knowing people sure mm -hmm. because then they yeah. would give me what i want and it would save me time mm -hmm. can you just touch it quickly based on how like what um, what was the inspiration, I guess, behind the types of cuisine that you prepare and the types of wines and like where do you source them from? Just to kind of give our listeners just a little bit of a taste of what it is that they can expect maybe out of like a service like yours, right? And the type of maybe, I mean, obviously to some extent, maybe it's, maybe it's affected by some of the, your travels as well, right? So mm -hmm. whether it be like to mm -hmm. Middle East or somewhere else, or if you had traveled to France, right? The, I mean, the, obviously... The big question yeah. would be how do you see cuisine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And where do you stop the time? <laughs> yeah. So it's like when, when and, and, and that's a perception that we kind of skewed a bit in, especially mm -hmm. in North America. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's deconstruct the, the simplest of dishes, uh, rice pudding. Mm -hmm. What cuisine is it? So uh, probably just like modern, uh, not really even modern. It's just like every day, really. So, so now, now it depends right. on where you stop the mm -hmm. clock mm -hmm. because it's rice pudding. Rice pudding um, came to North America via France, Italy. Sure. Uh, France, Italy, in France it would be uh, Rizzole, mm -hmm. and in Italy it would be Budino de Rizzo. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Now if you stop the clock there, but if you don't want to stop the clock there and you want to look at the nativity of rice, rice mm -hmm. originates in China. Mm -hmm. So without Marco Polo, we wouldn't have, so it's maybe it's Chinese cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So uh, if, if you want to put cuisine in paradigms of mm -hmm. ingredients, mm -hmm. then it's a problematic concept for sure um, mm -hmm. so it's like uh, my, uh, my cuisine is technique and approach mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I could take uh, ingredients from from Japan China and Iran and incorporate them into one dish mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's that's not mm -hmm. the, the uniqueness is my approach they they hire an approach and the technique the technique is mostly coming from French cuisine mm -hmm. and from my background in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to wines, they trust palate because we, I yeah. don't think you don't have Wine countries is, of um, uh, favorism. Mm. No, I mean, uh, I always open, I always stay open to uh, new regions and to exploring new regions, you know, starting to be wines from Armenia and all kinds of mm. spaces, you never wow, know. Okay. And the whole idea is really to, to, to be open and stay open and sometimes from like odd regions, you, you get great values, mm -hmm. right? And um, um, so it can it can come from anywhere, uh, basically it can be local as well. Mm -hmm. I go by um, the winemakers if I believe that they're doing something that is honest and you can taste it. Mm -hmm. I mean I can taste it at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, if they're doing something that is honest, um, if there is a great story there, then by all means. You know, so all of these together and I choose those wines and then um, as soon as we finalize the menu with the client, uh, then we just do pairings, so I think the most the focus is going to be on uh, the pairing, mm -hmm. how it goes with those specific dishes more mm -hmm. than anything else. And mm -hmm. it can be a situation where like forty percent are going to be French and the rest are going to be from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't matter to me because I'm not looking to give you like bottles from all over the world in one menu, I'm looking to give you, my focus is the food and the wine pairing, what we mm -hmm. are saying in that basic story. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I, I agree, it's, it's, yeah. Not, it's probably yeah. not unfair to 
to try to label things, especially with today's world being so intertwined mm -hmm. and being so global, but at the same time, yet so local kind of it's i don't want to go back to that analogy but it's it kind of is right to some yeah. extent yeah i mean you so, know we try yeah, to support yeah. local mm -hmm. um as much as we can you know there's uh, there are limitations when it comes to local mm -hmm. and we some need of them to be are aware the of it and uh, mm -hmm. like finding a bottle of, of 600 dollars a bottle local mm -hmm. it doesn't really exist and if it exists, exists it's not good it doesn't <laughs> make, it doesn't <laughs> make sense it doesn't make sense not on the palette and not History wise, mm -hmm. because I mean, I'm paying you six hundred dollars for for heritage and something. Like yeah, this there has to be something there. Years old. <laughs> there has to be something there. Uh, there has to be a reason why it's that expensive, and it's not only the palette. Mm -hmm. you know, otherwise, it would be hundred bucks or eighty bucks. Um, mm -hmm. So that is something that locally we cannot do, and they. Like, Obviously, it is a great fit for me and my concept, and for my client to taste mm -hmm. those spectacular wines from around the world. So I'm. I'm not interested in like limiting um, myself in that sense. That said, when I do uh, travel to Niagara and to Bimsville and uh, I meet like amazing people and I bring their wines forward mm -hmm. and uh, I'll even like convince clients to go and uh, try my local wine, if, even if they're anti-local, not to tell them where it is and they're like, oh, it's local, really? Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it happens as well, you know. Mm -hmm. We are Canadians. I mean, we don't. Uh, we don't you, know. You don't tell don't me. Don't bring a you. Canadian cow. Mm. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I can't have Canadian yeah, cow. Yeah. It must be from Ar Argentina only, yeah. right? So <laughs> that would be just yeah. silly. Um, I, I feel like I could talk to you guys for probably hours, just you know, <laughs> being interested so much in, in in the industry itself. And I think it's food and drink is sort of life to some extent yeah, because it creates exactly. us, it builds us as mm -hmm. as humans uh, and yeah. what we become. But. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, I think we, we should wrap up okay. because uh, we. This is just the, really the format of, of our podcast, right? And I, I don't. I'm not trying to be rude at all whatsoever. And I think you, you guys have been an incredible fine. guest, and you've you've shared some really incredible experiences with us mm -hmm. uh, as to you know your your journey so so far and the things that you guys are able to deliver to people in terms of experience and you know the passion that you you, you bring across as well. Um, can you tell our viewers a little bit more about where they can find you, how they can get in, in contact with you, maybe, you know, uh, like what's available on social media, how do they, you know, how can they reach out to you, mm -hmm. how far in advance do you, are you booked and like when are you taking bookings, you know, just uh, to kind of give you the platform to, okay. to speak about your brand a, a little bit as well. So mm -hmm. there's the website, obviously, mm -hmm. chefsom.ca. Okay. Um, it's like chef Som, the two words. Mm -hmm. Uh, then we have uh, on social media. I, I concentrate myself mostly on Twitter. I'm mm -hmm. uh, sorry, mm -hmm. Instagram. Right. Uh, so in, on Instagram, you have if you like the wine better, then you should follow Rebecca. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, her her name on Instagram is Som Selects. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do not confuse it with Som Select without the S at the end. That's a whole different <laughs> which person. Which are great as well. <laughs> which are okay. great as well. Right. Follow yeah. them as well. Follow them. Right. Too, yeah. if you like follow one. the S at the end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you have uh, Chef underscore Som, which is me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we try to give the two edges of it and we're very it's like as, as far as it goes like it's food and then our politics and everything else so mm -hmm. everything is on there it's mm -hmm. like my, my my even in my bio it says that if you're not political then you're privileged <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. so it's our life stories mm -hmm. like we, we invite people into our life because I think that if anybody has a problem with my gender or LGBTQ politics, mm -hmm. they're probably going to not like my philosophy and my food. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, that's how to get us um, mm -hmm. bookings. If I'm free in two days, I'll book you. Mm -hmm. um, normally our Saturdays are getting like snapped. Um, <laughs> yeah, Saturdays you need to book very quickly. Probably a month, mm -hmm. a month and a half Fridays ahead. Too, sure. Uh, yeah. Fridays, Saturdays, mm -hmm. the rest mm -hmm. of the week, mm -hmm. probably two days notice would be enough. Mm -hmm. like, mind you that we need to write a menu for you. So oh, of course, yeah. give me a few minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and I need to order animals and everything. It's like, it all depends on how you want the experience to go. So yeah. if you want the experience to be centered around me and mm -hmm. to trust me mostly, then yeah, I can do it. Like I can write a menu in, in for tomorrow mm -hmm. and order mm -hmm. everything it's like I'll I'll center the menu on like I'll call my butcher it's like what do you have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because otherwise we need to kill something for it right or age something for it sure so mm. otherwise it's like that that's the two formats mm -hmm. um, as 
that that's as far as booking yeah and the thing I mean. is that uh, when you call us you get us mm -hmm. like you're not going to get a different yeah. chef or a different sommelier and that's our uniqueness mm -hmm. um, it's always um, the two of you present it's always the mm -hmm. two of us you're probably um, talking to rebecca other mm -hmm. companies when sure. you go to them they will they have like a list of all kind of chefs mm -hmm. so they will call someone so mm -hmm. you do not really know what you're getting mm -hmm. uh, in our case you get both of us guaranteed that's why Saturdays for example you really need to book ahead of time because mm -hmm. I can't um, send you another chef it's on or have mm -hmm. some flexibility when it comes to the date so we'll find time that works for both of us because mm -hmm. uh, we can do only one event a night of course um, yeah because you have to concentrate all your energy on that exactly mm -hmm. so it's sure. it's, it's very specific for for you mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. experience yeah and then uh, let me just ask you a, a couple of just very short small questions yeah so let's say three of most affordable wines that taste amazing maybe that are local since we're talking about supporting local if anything comes to your mind okay. um back then cellar chardonnay if okay. you like some oakiness in chardonnay it actually mm -hmm. the winemaker is um using canadian oak which is uh, oh, nice. very interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Kube Kathrin, okay. uh, Sparkling yeah. Rosé from mm -hmm. Henry of Pelham. I think they're doing a beautiful job on sparkling mm -hmm. wine. Um, and Q Vineyards, uh, Q Vineyards, uh, Rosalie and their other sparkling wines are uh, really beautiful as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. That's great. And what about, uh, I wanted to ask you, where do you shop for your wine? Who's your butcher? My, my butcher is in Killen Dundas. His name is Alam. He's, okay. uh, the, sh the shop is Gomitz. Mm -hmm. He's very... Don't, don't, come, don't come with pragmatism to him. <laughs> come with, I want to do this. Right. And he will consult and find you the mm -hmm. cut. So it's a butcher shop that is very, very different than your usual. There's no like uh, pre-packed stuff on mm -hmm. there. It's like he mm -hmm. has some display. Sure. But in most cases, he will just run off to the fridge and cut you a fresh oh, oh, what's what's the the best meat that he has what like what would you rec really I recommend really recommend trying no okay <laughs> it always it's always different it's it all a matter of what you sure. want today mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what you are cooking so mm -hmm. I mean and what, what about vegetables where do you source your vegetables I, I have a few groceries okay so fair enough okay it's, mm -hmm. and anything any last uh, thoughts at all that you wanted to add just out of curiosity no I think we're good. Know what yeah. you eat. Know what you eat. <laughs> know what you eat. That's probably the strongest <laughs> message we've had. Know what you drink as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And ask questions all the time. Mm -hmm. And take advantage of, like, wh when you come across professionals, ask them questions. Know your food. Know your wine. Like, try to figure it out, even though it's a very marketing kind of industry, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Sure. And as for, like, sommeliers and, and personal chefs, like, up, up and coming, any, like, last piece of advice for them? How to get into this industry um, and just become successful? Mm. Good luck. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> good luck. I like that. Uh, you gotta make sure you really love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure it's almost an addiction, because if it's not, it's gonna break you down, and you might as well do something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because this is to succeed. As there's so many sommeliers that have been sommeliers for two years and three years, and you need to, as a sommelier, like there may be five head sommeliers in the city mm -hmm. so it's either push for that mm -hmm. or create your own niche mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. figure out figure out how to make money of it because like many times you won't make that much money so really try mm -hmm. to figure out the financial aspect mm -hmm. of it so you can actually make a living of it mm -hmm. as far as chefs i can give you i i used to uh, when i was a sound engineer i used to teach at the college mm -hmm. and my always my first lecture on the first time that I met a class would be guys if any of you can do anything else in their lives mm -hmm. run <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's, 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 it's a, a work of passion mm -hmm. yeah. it's yeah. most days like it's very rewarding if you're passionate about it but mm -hmm. there are yeah. so many pitfalls and days of depression and days of like mm -hmm. you won't see the sun and mm -hmm. you won't see anything and it's demanding and you cut yourself and you burn yourself and if you don't love it and no, if you like cooking one pot of rice, host family members once a week. I mean, seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's understanding the mechanics of doing what we do. I mean, and that it's not going to be about you and your passion. It is, but it's not at the end of the day. It's like, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, doing something professionally and doing it as a hobby are two different things. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. if you just like cooking, keep it as a hobby. It's a <laughs> great hobby, it's fun. As a profession, it changes a bit, but 
before you run away and go to school, go work in the kitchen, go wash dishes for, for, for a month. Mm -hmm. See what it looks like, immerse yourself in it. If you still like it, then take the money and start learning or whatever you need to do on, on getting there. But test the waters first. Mm. Yeah, check that, that you love be. it. That's the most important thing. And then you have to do lots of things for free. You can't escape that. Mm -hmm. mm. Things that will give you promotion and instead. You need to spread the word about this is who I am. Because I, I checked when I was young, I was thinking, okay, who are the, the most successful sommeliers that I know and what makes them successful? And it comes down to their personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the thing. Like mm -hmm. you gotta focus on that and spread that personality around, and then you'll have a name. Mm -hmm. Without having a name, and I think it. as a chef or as a sommelier, like you won't be extra successful. You you need to have the way uh, the name mm -hmm. around, especially if you're self-employed. Mm 